Hello everybody, welcome to the Daily Sip. My name is Oliver and my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea. And today what we're gonna talk about is must a healthy green tea be bitter? So I had a question of on one of our followers on Instagram is when I was doing the video about how not to shake your tea, not to have a bitter tea. He was asking me, okay, you're talking about the catechins and then the tea becoming more bitter, but aren't the catechins good for your body? And the answer is absolutely yes. Catechins are good, but the question is what I want to talk a little bit about today is if the tea has to be bitter to be a healthy green tea. So when we talk about catechins, we know these are polyphenols and they are known to have a liberating and an antioxidative effect on your body. So liberating yourself from free radicals, which can damage your cells and can also help you to appear younger for sure but they also are uh, known to be really uh, detoxifying or having a detoxifying effect on your body they can or they're also linked to reducing allergies and as well as neurodermitis so skin problem rushes of any sorts so they're quite a, or there's quite a broad spectrum of positive effects linked to these catechins but um, what we want to want to dive into is actually okay. When you talk about green tea, you can go into very bitter green teas, or you can also go into small, smoother, savory, more umami-rich green teas, which are known to be more the shaded green teas. And there we talk about uh, tea which is richer in theanine and can be reduced or can be a little bit lower in catechins but the main question today is actually should i really go into a green tea which is rich in catechins and do i have to select green tea which are very big or very strong in catechins that they have the biggest health effect on me in general what you can say is actually that when you drink green tea you already have a good amount of catechins if you look at the different varietals which are available in japan is that you already with just the dry leaves you can have an range of around 15 to 26 percent of catechins can be in the leaves so even if you go a little bit for lower catechin level already there you are quite high as Maeda Yamamoto in his study from 2001 was uh, um, when he was analyzing the different uh, cultivars so the different green tea types or green tea plant types crossbreeds or pure green tea types uh, which are available in Japan when he um, really went into the study of them he found that most of them are tending to be between 15 and 26 percent one of them standing out is the benifuki benifuki is said that it is especially in the so-called egcg um, polyphenol or catechins the highest but also other cultivars they get quite close to it some you might know and some uh, i personally like is certainly the samidori and the okumidori these tea also they tend to be around 20 to 22 percent of catechins or will tend to have 20 to 22 percent of catechins in the dry leaves meanwhile the benifuki goes up to 26 so getting really really close to it meanwhile the benifuki itself is quite a bitter tea and it is pretty strong it is in these bitter notes and it is weaker especially in the amino acids which then smoothen the tea but if you're going for a tea which is a little bit broader in its spectrum not too strong on the bitter tones so you can absolutely go for an alchemy dory sami dory when we talk about yabukita yabukita is a little bit lower there we talk about 15 to 15.5 percent of catechins in the leaves so it's a little bit of a weaker catechin tea but if you just want to have the tea for your normal intake and catechin intake and wants to kind of keep this health level then a normal catechin level of 15% is more than enough there is a lot of goodness already in these teas and if you want to focus only 
because you need to cure anything, then I would suggest it just to see a doctor and really sit together and have a look at it. But normally you can say as, an, as a healthy human being and you want to have this antioxidative effect, normally then you can go for Yabukita or even Okumidori, which is quite good, a Samidori, which is quite good. And if you want to sometimes give you the extra kick of this EGCG, then you can definitely go into the um, Benifuki area, but knowing that Benifuki is quite a bitter tea. So today, what I brought with me today, so just to enjoy um, this newly gained knowledge, which I was reading up also on the internet, is um, that I brought with me a uh, Okumidori. This Okumidori has been shaded a little bit. So what happens actually in the shading process is that you have a little bit uh, less of a turnover of um, theanine, so amino acids going into catechins, so it's a little bit lower in catechins, but even there we talk about 10 to 15 percent, which you might have less of catechins in your tea due to, to hindering this process. But what you have is you have a much higher richness of these amino acids in your leaf, making the tea very sweet and very smooth. And that's why I personally tend to have also um, shaded teas with, because they are very nutrient rich, because they have a lot of different other compounds also in their leaves and not only the catechins. So that's why I personally tend to have uh, not only taste wise, but also nutrient uh, wise to really go for shaded teas. Good. So Okamidori, it is actually a crossbreed, which is quite new. It's coming. Uh, it was kind of invented in the 70s. And this tea is for here which I have is a tea, which is a so-called Fukamushicha. Fukamushicha, a deep steamed tea, ha showing a little bit more of a rounder, of a full, of a richer profile, having smaller leaves and also then needing less time to brew, but still releasing a good amount of its compounds, ranging from, uh, the, um, from the amino acids to the catechins to the tea water. Good. Voila. This is this. So what you can see it's a very nice green but also golden color in terms of taste i use now 70 degrees water around 155 fahrenheit and actually what i can experience is that i have a nice little bit of this um more of a little bit of a, of a, of a catechin taste which is pronouncing itself a little bit in a citrusy, a more slightly astringent note, but as the tea has been shaded, there's also a very strong richness of kind of, of stronger sweet and savory compounds in it. So this tea is very, very nicely balanced. And what you have to know is also there's often a little bit of myth out there uh, about matcha and how matcha has much more of the catechins inside. So what I uh, read up as well is that actually matcha also due to the shading um, is uh, the catechin level is a little bit lower and it is not at all the most catechin rich tea. Also EGCG, as I said before, Benifuki is the absolutely must go with this one here. And matcha sometimes even gets lower in terms of catechins. So if you want to really go for the catechin rich tea, Definitely you can go for Benifuki, but in general, what I said before is that you have a good range between 14 to 26 percent, 15 to 26 percent around there where the catechins or the amount of catechins is inside. And there you have a health benefit, which is far or very well enough beneficial for your body without that you might get scared that, OK, I really need to get 
for a catechin rich tea because they're mostly not very pleasant. And what is also important is sometimes when a tea is bitter, it can be a reason or it can, the effect can actually be that the catechins in this tea is the same level as, for example, these okumidori, which is quite sweet and quite nice, which I'm drinking here, but it can come from the second harvest where automatically also the amino acids are lower as the teas are not shaded and then this whole uh, kind of nutrient richness of the tea of the side of the amino acids can be lower and that's why it is not said that even if you're drinking a bitter or more bitter sencha that you have per leaf or per gram of the leaf more catechins but it can also be a sign that actually you have a lower amount of tea and a lower amount of amino acids in the tea. So a less sweeter compounds, more bitter compounds, and then automatically the taste of the tea is more bitter. So this is this a small session about catechins. So I think you can still continue to uh, drink nice, savory, sweet teas. And uh, knowing that also here in these teas, even when they are not bitter, they have a very nice and very good amount of catechins. Good. This was this. I hope you liked it. And if you ever have a question or if you ever want me to cover anything, any topic, I'll be more than happy to do so. I wish you a great day. See you. Bye-bye.